So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Or something that makes sense, feel free to ask. With number one, two, three, and four, you had to write an equation that was either parallel or perpendicular to the one that was given. So for number one, if it's parallel, the slope is going to stay the same. And you just have to change the y-intercept. If you kept it the same, then you match the same line, and they need to be different. They can't be the exact same, otherwise they're not parallel. Same thing with number two. Has to be similar to this, so they have to be the same slope, which is zero. The only type of equation with a zero slope is another y equals. So you can put four or any other number, it just cannot be the exact same. So some of you were putting the exact same thing, which would make it the exact same line, not parallel lines. Questions on those two? Um, I didn't say this, but as we're going through this, make sure you are fixing any mistakes on your own. That way you don't make those same mistakes on the test. Do you need extra loose paper? There's some in the back over here next to the page. Okay, a bunch. Use it all. Um, number three, these are perpendicular. So the slope has to change. Take this slope and flip it. It's already negative, so make this positive. And then the wires that can be the same, it can be different, it doesn't matter. And then for number four, similar. All whole numbers are over one, so when you flip that, it's going to become a fraction. This was positive, make it negative. And then you can keep the wires up the same, make it different, it doesn't matter. Questions on either of those? And then, so those were each worth one point, getting the equation correct with the right slope and either a different y-intercept for the first two or the same or different for the last two. Five through eight were all worth two points, one for the work, one for the answer. For five and six, these are both parallel, so the slope is going to stay the same. We don't need the y-intercept they gave us, so if you want to cross that out, you can, so you're not using it. And then you're using your point slope formula. I'm going to write both of these at the same time, but then solve one and then go back and solve the other. So y minus y1, which is 1, equals our slope times x minus x1, which is 2, for number 5. And then for number 6, y minus negative 4 equals negative 3 times x minus y. Starting with number 5, we would need to distribute. Be careful and double check your math. Some of you got three, but still kept it negative. Double check that in your calculator, that way you have the right sign. Some of you got a positive, but not three. So again, double check your math. Add one to both sides. So y equals negative three over two x plus four was the final equation for that. For number six, you needed to make this a plus before doing anything else. Some of you didn't do that and then tried to keep solving and then that threw everything else off. And we can also distribute at the same time. Again, double check your math. Some of you got 15 but made it negative, which threw everything else off. And then subtract 4 on both sides. So your equation was y equals negative 3x plus 11. Do 
we have questions on either of those two? Seven and eight are similar, but with seven and eight, they're both perpendicular. So the slope has to change. So if this was a negative 4, if we take it and flip it and make it positive, that new slope should be 1 fourth. Some of you were using the same slope, which caused everything else to be wrong. Again, we don't need that negative 1. So y minus 5 equals 1 fourth times x minus 4 would be the start to our equation. Distribute the one fourth. Double check your math. And then add five to both sides. So y equals one fourth x plus four was our final answer for that one. Any questions on that one? And then for 8, there were two ways you could go about doing this. One with work and one without. The one with work is you would have to know what this slope is. And then you would have to know what the opposite of that would be. Which is 0. A lot of you figured that part out. Then if you're doing it with work, this is where it got a little dicey. So one minus two, y minus two equals zero times x minus two. That part you guys did fine. But then when you distribute the zero, zero times anything is just gonna be zero. So this entire right side is just zero. And then we would just be adding two to both sides. The way to do this without really work, you still have to know that the opposite of the slope given is zero. The only type of slope, the only type of equation that has a zero slope is a y equals. And then you could look right here and say y equals 2. If it were reversed and you ended up with an undefined slope, there you cannot do work for an undefined slope, so you have to know that. Do we have any questions on 8? For 9, you had to find the original slope and y-intercept, or at least the slope. Some of you got 3 but didn't make it negative. Some of you counted the wrong way and got 1 third instead of 3. So just be careful with that. And then for A, you had to write an equation that was parallel to the first one, to the original. So the slope had to be the same. And then the y-intercept just had to be different. You can make it negative, you can make it a different number, it just can't be positive 2. Otherwise, that would be the exact same line. And then for B, the slope had to be perpendicular. So take this slope and flip it, make it positive. And then it can be the same slope or a different y, I'm sorry, a different y-intercept or the same. Do we have any questions on that one? Number nine was worth three points, finding the original and then doing A and then G.
for the second objective. I'm going to do a lot of this in my calculator quickly. You can follow along and redo it in your calculator, or you can just see at the end what the final answer will be. For 10, you have to find which of these best fit this line. So the slope is negative, so it can't be A and it can't be C, because those are both positive slopes. So between B and D, the only one that matches this is D. Because as I draw that line through those points, the, lines go, the line is surrounded by those points the most. So D would be the answer to that one, and that was worth one point. Questions on that one? For 11, this was worth two points. One for writing your line of best fit, even though that's not what it asked for. That way, if your answer was wrong, I can see if it was because of your equation or not. Um, so the equation, the line of best fit, and the answer to the problem. So in your calculator, so I'm going to kind of go through this kind of fast, um, but if you're missing any of these steps, let me know. I can go back to something. You should also have out your instructions because I'm just following those instructions. And again, if you want to practice doing this again with me, you can. It's, you don't have to. Do we have the diagram The instructions. Yeah, I'm not looking at the instructions. Oh, sorry. I guess. Make sure that your numbers line up at the end. And then on to step two, stack, scroll over to calculate number four. Scroll down to store regression equation and hit alpha trace and enter until your screen changes. And then somewhere near your question, write this. Some of you were writing A equals B equals, but I need this in the equation format. Some of you rounded, which was fine to a certain extent. Negative 12.12 was fine. Negative 12.13 was fine. Negative 12.1 was fine. But if you just made it negative 12 and got rid of the decimals, that was rounded too much. Go back to the stat and edit. Do you have your instructions?
to sit up, come back on this up and that. Um, after you have your equation, it's asking about a 15 year old and looking for length of time. So it's asking for y and you're given x. So this would be your step three. Um, you are already on that screen, so I'm just going to redo that. From this screen, you would type in 15, STO, X, enter. And then grab your equation from alpha trace. And then again, some of you rounded, which was fine to some extent. 90.39 was fine, 90.4 was fine, 91 was too much, or 90 was too much. You need to have some of the decimals. You also need to label what we're looking for. To be specific, um, Ms. Larson, I might have them over here. Yeah. Questions on that one? For the next one, same process, but you needed to change your years. First year is always zero. Every year after that is how many years has it been since? So some of you didn't do that, which changed your equation. You still may have gotten the same answer, but your equation would have been different. And then we're putting in these values. So then go back into stat, clear out your list by going to the top and hitting clear. And then put in zero, four, six, seven, eight. And all the decimals. And then you're back to step two. So stat, scroll over to calculate. Down to number four, hit four. Scroll down to store regression equation. Hit alpha trace, and then enter until your screen changes. And then again, you can round, you can put all the decimals, you can round to 0 0.09, 0 0.08 would be okay, um, 0.1 is too much, 7.09 is fine, if you didn't round, 7.1 is fine, just 7 is not, so just be careful with your rounding. Um, some of you are also putting 0.9 instead of 0.09, so also be careful with that, because that would also throw off your answer. So then we're going to move on to step three. We are looking for the population in 2020, so we have to figure out how many years has that been since the original, which would be 20. So we're going to store that in our calculator. So from this screen, I'm just going to type in 20, STO, X, 
enter. And then go back and grab our equation, alpha trace. And again, rounding, 8.84 would be fine, 8.8 .8 would be fine, 9 is too much. And then tell me what the label is. So you can say in millions, the population, something that tells me that you know what this means. And then for the last part, um, interpolation is is what they're asking the 20, 2020, fall within the data or outside of the data for extrapolation. That would be extrapolation. So that one was worth three points, getting the line of best fit, getting your answer, and then this final thing. These could both have partial credit. This final one was all or nothing. Right. And then 13, you just needed the equation. So you're do this one more time. <laughs> So I thought. Okay. Um, so we're going to do the last one. So go back, stat edit, clear out your data. And then be careful with the decimals, put all of that in. It must have been cracked or something. It's the only thing I can think of. And then on to step two, stat, scroll over to calculate, number four. In this case, you don't even really have to store it because we're not looking for data to answer the question. We just need the equation itself. So y equals 29.41, x minus 162.01. That one was worth one point just for getting that equation correct. So when we get back, we will talk about the last page. And then go from there. For majority of these, you needed to define your variables. Define your variables. What are those words? Um, set up your equation. Solve your equation. Get your answer. So for number 14, anything that says the word per, that's going to be M. Okay. <coughs> Plus two. Anything that is a one-time thing, like you're only paying for this once, you're only charged for this once, that is your fee. And then if you're given M and B, then you're just looking for X and Y. So if you're not sure which is which, you can ask yourself, does cost depend on hours or does hours depend on cost? Whichever depends on the other. Cost depends on time. Um, that would be your Y. So that means hours would be your X. I don't know if you can read.
read that because I'm already close. And then once you have all of those things, you just have to put them together in an equation. Um, if we were counting these hours, oh. it would be five and a half hours. Some of you put 5.3 because of 30 minutes, but you have to think about that as 30 minutes of out of 60 would be half of the time. So as a decimal, that'd be 45. So then we're looking for Y. We don't know what that is. We know M is 17.50. We know X is 5.5. And we know B is 35. That would be your equation that you would write down. This one, um, because you could put that all in your calculator and just solve it at the same time. I wasn't looking for that work, but if you gave it, that's great. And then make sure you're labeling what we're looking for. So we're looking for costs, so dollars. Questions on that one? For 15, you had M. Here it talks about a one-time fee, which would be our B if we knew what it was. And then we're given an X and a Y. Again, if you're not sure, would gains depend on cost? Would cost depend on number of games? And cost would depend on number of games? So because technically you're given a point here and you have to find B, you could use point slope here. But those of you that did this, most of you did not. Most of you did not do point slope, and I was okay with that. Um, so if you wrote it in a similar equation like this, that was fine. If you did point slope, that was also fine. So this would be 47 equals our m times our x plus b. And that would be the equation we would put in. But then we would need to solve that equation to get our b. By multiplying. And then subtracting. So then our solution, since we're looking for the cost to rent shoes, this will be a dollar, dollar sign, 35. Questions on those two? Number 16, when you are looking at what they gave you, I have 850 square foot and cost, and then another square foot and cost. Because the amount of square footage directly affects the cost, this is like an input-output situation where we have X's and Y's, and we're not giving, given M and B. So that would be your x1, y1, x2, y2. And then you have two choices. One, do this work algebraically. Find the slope, find the equation. Use that equation to answer the last part, which some of you started to do. Some of your slopes were wrong, so then you ended up with the wrong equation, but then you didn't actually find the answer. But you can go that route algebraically. You can also use your calculator, do your line of best fit stuff for the same problem. I'm going to do that just for sake of time.
So I'm going to go back into our stat, edit, and clear out these lists. But now we only have four numbers to worry about instead of a whole list. Our x's would be the square footage because the cost is going to depend on the square foot. So 850 and 1000. And then 1172 and 1268. Some people aren't doing this in the calculator. You might see this on the test. So it's going to try. <coughs> And then you can go on to your step two. Go back to stat, scroll over to calculate, number four. And then down to store regression equation, alpha trace, and enter until your screen changes. Which is your offset? Which is your Or not the very last one, sorry, uh, 16. So this would be your equation that you would write in the box. Y equals 0.64x plus 628. Or if you did all the work, like, algebraically, you would end up with a fraction instead of the decimal, but they're the same. I think it was 16 over 25 or something like that. But if you did it in the calculator, you would just say that you use line of best fit. That would be showing your work, showing how you got that. And then you again have a choice. You have your equation. You're looking for the monthly rent for a 1,200 square foot office. So you could do this next part algebraically, or in the calculator, either or, doesn't matter. If you do it algebraically, then I would be able to see that work. If you do it in the calculator, you would just say that you stored this for x. That would be you showing your work, because your calculator is going to solve it for you. So then I would, add from this screen, type in 1200. STO, X, enter, and then alpha trace to get 1396. If you did this algebraically and everything was correct, you should have also gotten the same answer. Do we have any questions on that? So still four points for that one, defining your variables, the equation, the solution, and either writing this to show your work or doing it algebraically to show your work. And then in this last one, we're given nickels and dimes. The nickels and dimes don't affect each other. So these are two different things being compared. Because of that, you have to use a different equation, your ax plus by equals c. So some of you were using y equals mx plus b, which didn't really work for this one. Your c is always your total, so you can start there with defining. Your a and b are usually given, but in this problem it's something you have to know, the worth of the nickels and the dime. So somewhere you need to say that's what it is. And it doesn't matter if you do nickels first or dimes, just the rest of your problem has to match up. Then since I put B as dimes, the number they gave us is going to be Y. 
And since we're looking for number of nickels, that's going to go with x, or that's going to be x. So the a and the x have to be related, the b and the y have to be related. How you put that doesn't matter, they just have to be related. And then we would write our equation 0.05x plus 0 0.10 times 46 equals 5.45. Some of you were, if you got to this problem, you were putting 10 and 5. Be careful with that. Since it is cents, we need decimals. Or if you were using a decimal, you put 0.5 instead of 0.05. So again, be careful with that. And then we can start to solve. Be careful with your decimals that you're bringing them along. If you lose them and it becomes 460 instead of $4.60, your answer may become skewed. So then at the end, divide both sides by 0 0.05. Because there are two decimals dividing, you're going to end up with a whole number. Double check your answer. Some of you, if you did this problem, were getting decimal answers. If the question is asking for number of nickels, we can't have decimals. It'd be very rude to have half a nickel. <laughs> like trying to picture what that would even look like. So just make sure that your answer makes sense for the problem. Money-wise, too, if you get like something that's really big and the total, it's more than the total, something's not right. Go back and double check your work. Do we have any questions on that one? Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a choice. We can either take the test as scheduled today Next Wednesday is going to be your flex day, so you'd have time to do retake stuff, things like that, like normal. Or, take the test on Friday. Today would be your flex day. You would not get a flex day next week, so it means the next time our flex, our next flex day wouldn't be till the end of November, towards the end of November. So you would have to come before or after school to do retake stuff. So, test today and things like normal, or... Test on Friday, today's a flex day, no flex day till end of November. So I'll give you like a minute to think about, you can talk to each other about it. I'll also say, while you're thinking, if, you, if it's majority for flex today, and you still want to take the test today, you can do that. Alright, <laughs> so it's going to be majority, so if it's majority flex and you still want to take your test today, that's fine, and then, yeah, we're doing raising our hands, and then Friday, if we're doing flex today and you choose to take your test today, you would just have flex on Friday. If it's majority for test, everyone is going to take the test today, and then you could finish it during flex or before after school if you did. Okay, so who wants to take the test today? Okay, that's what I thought. So, of those five, you guys can still take your test today. Everyone else will have flex today. That means we need to be actively practicing what you feel like you still need practice on. Not on our phones, not taking a nap. We all need to be working on something. So that means if you go back on the academy to practice, you can do something.